Welcome back. This is video four in our tax reduction series. As we went through our chart of taxes, what we're going to talk about is the tax on our a tax at our death, uh, which I call it's also the New Jersey death tax trap. We have to understand there's a, simply this: there's federal income, there's federal estate taxes, and uh, the estate tax is simply a tax on property, your cash, and real estate stocks, any other asset you own, that you transfer from uh, the person who passed to heirs. Um, and interestingly enough, there's been a lot of talk over the last, actually probably over well over a decade, about the estate tax. It's currently at uh, $5.4 million per person. So it's about almost $11 million for a couple. It's interesting that uh, we're not going to address that particular issue because uh, if you look here, basically 99.8% of all estates owe no estate tax at all. So we're talking about a very, very small few percentage of folks. But I do want to uh, make this example. It's out in the red. The only exception to this are inherited retirement accounts. Uh, they are subject to income taxes from the first dollar. So it's very important to know that there is a difference. What I want to do is give you a tax tip. And the tip is simply just don't die in New Jersey. New Jersey has the worst death tax structure in the entire country. There are two states that have both an inheritance tax as well as an estate tax. And those are obviously New Jersey and Maryland. But the difference is that New Jersey's estate tax is extremely low. It starts at uh, $675,000. So any kind of estate above that amount uh, will be taxed in New Jersey. How bad is it? When we're looking at it, most tax rates are progressive. In other words, with your income tax, the more you earn, the more you tax. The difference is pretty profound. In New Jersey, the estate tax is regressive. So it's hitting smaller estates uh, with a higher percentage than it would for larger ones. So for the first 675 is exempt, anything after that um, could be you know, taxed and pretty badly taxed. So let's use the example. If you have uh, $25,000 more than the 675. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, you just kind of cleared it. By the time they got a little dust settled, they found an extra $25,000. The tax due on that $25,000 is 37%. Uh, and that's an additional, or if you want to do the math, it's $9,250. If the amount is at $50,000, the tax doubles to $18,500, but still at the 37% level. Once you go to $75,000, the tax goes to $20,400, uh, which is basically 27.2%. So the point I'm trying to make here is simply this. If you're modestly well off, uh, you, you have a home here in New Jersey, some of the the property the values have escalated tremendously. So it's a good possibility uh, you can be within those numbers without being considered, as far as you're considering yourself, wealthy. Um, the smaller estates are really clobbered, uh, you know, big time as far as the dollars are concerned. But New Jersey is not finished yet. They have an inheritance tax as well. And that is levied on siblings, or their spouses, even a deceased child's spouse, nieces, nephews, cousin, friends, um, anything else you can stick in that category. Um, the exemption is not the 675, is a measly $500. What happens after that? The rate starts at 11%, escalates to 16%. So depending on the amount inherited, that could be a huge, huge hit if you're leaving, let's say, an IRA to a uh, niece or a nephew or, or, or even a, a sibling. So what you have to be very careful of, New, New Jersey has both levels of taxes. Uh, we're one of only two states, and we're very, very tough on um, letting stuff slide. 
Misunderstanding hurts, and it really decimates fortunes, and it reduces your lifestyle to the point where it's very sad. What I want to do is help you understand that reducing taxes means not learning just about the taxes and the rules, following the rules, staying on top of the rules, and make sure the family understands the rules. What we're looking at, and we talked about it in some of the other programs, is the term means testing. Means testing is really going to wipe out the middle class. Means testing means simply this. If you have some means, you have a little asset, some savings, you were frugal in your lifetime, and you save for retirement, you're going to be clobbered uh, with tax on your Social Security, pay higher Part B and D Medicare premiums, uh, as well as having a lot of other problems as far as being into higher tax brackets. So I want you to get prepared and understand these things are coming and reducing taxes is critical because as the taxes get reduced, more money stays in your pocket to pay for these extra costs. Judge Hand said something pretty profound. He was the longest serving federal judge in our country's history. He said, as U.S. citizens, you are allowed to arrange your affairs to pay the least amount in taxes as legally possible. What can you do? Which direction do you go? You know, we talked about in the uh, capital gain, should you pay now, pay later, should you defer? It's very, very confusing. But let's go back to the beginning. Well, not that far back. The foundation for a successful retirement income plan requires that all the pieces work together. This was the this is the beginning slide of all the programs, and I bring this up to say this: you can't look at tax um, strategies in a vacuum. You have to look at the overall picture. If I can save a few dollars in taxes. Does it make sense? Do you say, well, you know, a few dollars is really not worth the effort, but if it's going to save you a lot on your Medicare premiums and it's going to save you a lot on taxing and Social Security, then that makes sense. So the concept is straightforward. you got to look at all the pieces to make sure everything fits together and is working well. Let's look at some income errors. Number one, not guaranteeing your income. Providing for, you know, not providing for future inflation, using the wrong tools, and not looking at taxes. A lot of folks will do things, they're saying, well, I'm going to take this income at this age or 65 or whatever, and they're not looking uh, for future inflation and using the wrong tools and not looking at the tax impact. Uh, we referred back to the one on Social Security program. We talked about uh, the little extra dollars coming out of a required distribution out of an IRA have a huge impact on your Social Security. So that, that is in that uh, tax return. We'll look at something called a uh, scheduled income portfolio system, which is a SIPS. Uh, sometimes they refer to it as a tree, but the main purpose is that um, it creates a guaranteed income. It creates income that increases over time because we obviously are going to have inflation. And it protects the value of the portfolio. And it utilizes tools exactly for the purpose that they were created for. We're not trying to jury rig something to work like this. It's utilizing the tools exactly as they were created to be used. The basics of a tree program, it really does a couple of things. Remember, we have to look at the whole picture. It could possibly eliminate, uh, eliminate tax on your Social Security, and it'll possibly reduce capital gains taxes that we talked about in this program as well. How does it work? It's straightforward. It's designed so that your income increases, your tax decreases, and it's structured so that your principal never diminishes. Let's look at an example of using a tree or SIPs. And a, tr a trade is a tiered retirement equity enhancement on the SIPs. Uh, we just explained. But what it does is this. Looking at it with no tree or SIPs, you have a couple that has about $300,000 in assets. 
they have AGI of 48,000. Now, AGI is adjusted gross income. Their Social Security is taxed at 85%. Their total taxes due are $6,300. And their spendable income is $37,000. Now, this is not uncommon with a lot of, uh, yeah, I'm going to call them middle class New Jerseyans. Um, you're roughly in that particular category, maybe even a little bit higher. Um, you're not having a lot of spendable income. Now, let's look at the scenario when you add a tree to it or, or a SIPs. You have the same $300,000 in assets, but your AGI, your adjusted gross income, is at $32,000. The difference is now your Social Security is not taxed. Total taxes due of about $2,700. And look at the difference. What's the spendable income? The spendable income is $49,000. You have the same scenario, but you're using the financial products uh, that fit or were designed to do exactly what they should do. We're not trying to jury rig different things. Huge difference. So we want to be careful that we're taking advantage of all the tax rules and all the possible scenarios where we can put more dollars in our pocket. Now, what happens, or if you want to break down the SIPs and, and why it makes a huge difference is, let's take an example of $100,000 in a CD uh, and it's earning 5%. Again, I don't want people calling me. We're just using the 5% as a rough number to give you the fact that 5% uh, on $100,000 will earn about $5,000. It could be an investment, it could be a bond, it could be whatever it is. Uh, it's really not that critical. Now, if you take the $5,000 and you take a monthly income from that, that'll net you about $417. Now, is that $417 all yours? And we talked about that in some of the other programs or earlier. Uh, no, it's not. There's taxes due. So if you look at the fact, uh, you got the 417, we'll take roughly about 25% out for federal, state, and Social Security taxes. That's going to net you about, uh, well, the tax is $104. It's going to net you about a $313 uh, of net income. When you look at the SIPs program, and let's say you start with $100,000, here's how it's going to make a huge difference. In other words, we're using the right products for the right job and that's going to be tax efficient and is financially efficient. Now we're going to take the the hundred thousand dollars and split it into four buckets pots whatever you want to call them and we're now going to start to take an income from this. So the first bucket of twenty three twenty six thousand five hundred eleven dollars is going to generate an income of four hundred and fifty nine dollars a month for five years. Now if you look at the 313 before you can see right off the bat uh, we're looking at a larger increase in income. Now, after five years, that income stops. Your next bucket of the 21,218 that has been growing for the past five years now is going to produce an income of $492 a month, and that will last five years. Your third bucket that you initially placed the $16,027 in has been growing over the two five-year periods over the last 10 years. Now it's going to kick out to you an income of $509 a month. Now the fourth bucket that you put the $36,000 in, that has now replenished itself and is now back to $100,000. Now that's the math of the numbers, but let's look at this. We're looking at 96.28% of that four hundred and fifty nine dollars is tax free uh, then it's seventy one point eight nine and sixty five point four four the point here is that as we have um, the income is greater but the taxes are going to be less so that's the that's how the tree or a SIPs works with an overall financial plan it gets you more income by keeping your taxes down now um, I ask a person, you hear the commercials, you got 15 minutes, you know, say 15% and the Geico's and your 
all your commercials on, on TV. Some of them are funny, you know, some of them aren't. But um, if you can, and, and I said to you, would you like to get a discount on all your insurances, your automobile, your home, your Medicare supplement insurance? A lot of folks would say, absolutely, you know, I would love to get a discount, but I've got to change plans or I've got to reduce coverage. What you have to follow is this. Let's use an example. Let's say you have uh, your car insurance is due, your home insurance is due, your medical supplement insurance is due, and you're going to take um, $5,000 out of your bank account uh, to make the payment. Um, when you earn interest on that $5,000, you got to pay tax on it. So if you took out $5,000, technically, there's a tax due on it. Now, you, you paid it out of the dollars, but in simplicity, that $5,000 it was taxed. So here's how it would work. If you took out the $5,000, let's say the tax on that was $500, whatever the number is, um, you would have to take out technically more than $5,000 because you'd pay the tax and then have the balance of $5,000 to make your payments. The difference is when you use a SIPs or tree, because the income coming out is tax-free, you need to take out just about exactly what's due on the bill. You don't have to take out extra. So there's tax dollars or a way to decrease your cost for those uh, products uh, without making any changes to coverages. Now, um, when you get the savings on there because you're not paying the taxes, where does that dollar stay? Ultimately, it stays in your pocket. Now, in many cases, it's quite possible to get yourself in a lower tax bracket. You want, one, you want to look at uh, lowering or limiting tax on Social Security, cutting capital gains taxes in half or lower, uh, reducing taxes on interest income. Uh, again, less taxes equals more money where, obviously, it's in your pocket. Now, a lot of times... Um, we refer to studies that actuaries do. Actuaries are really extremely smart mathematicians that will predict with certainty how many homes will burn down, how many people will get sick or die in any given year. But actuaries are really mostly uh, noted for predicting mortality. In other words, how many people of a certain age group uh, will perish. I asked the question, What's the difference, or what is a Sicilian actuary as compared to a regular actuary? Well, the difference between a Sicilian actuary, Sicilian actuary, and a regular actuary is a Sicilian actuary can actually give you the people's names. Hope you thought that was funny. Now, has anyone heard of the PPA of 06? That's the Pension Protection Act of 2006. It's really got a lot of uh, input in there that really has a, a lot to do with... Uh, not just pensions, has a lot to do with things that are not pensions, it'll help you withdraw money uh, to pay for catastrophic illness or home care on a very tax-favored basis. Uh, it's tax-deferred growth each year, which is important. Uh, if the money is not used, it will pass to beneficiaries without probate, which is very good. Uh, any kind of withdrawals are tax-free. The concept that we talk about in some of the other programs is how do you get what they call a dollar multiplier? If you're going to spend or use a dollar, how could you get two or three dollars value out of each and every dollar? There is one super important topic uh, that I kind of like to address. And I thought about it in all the programs that we initially designed and it really kind of didn't fit in anywhere. But it, it is that critical that I really wanted to uh, find the place for it. So I threw it in here. It's called the six must-have documents that everyone needs. Uh, what I'm going to be doing in the future, I will develop a full series on this um, so that you can understand a little bit more detail. But these are the documents that everyone should have. One, we all know we should have a will. If we don't have one, we got to get one. And that basically uh, takes care of the problem after you're deceased. You have a power of attorney for financial. Now, the thing that's important about a power of attorney for financial things is you want layers in there. In other words, if you have three or four children or whatever, uh, you want to name one child if they can serve the next child. That's the layers. Uh, you want to allow gifting in there to, so uh, you know family members can give away assets. Uh, very, very important when you talk about Medicaid planning. 
Uh, you also want to have a power of attorney for health care. Now, this is the person they call it a health care proxy. Uh, again, the same concept. You want layers in there if one child can't serve another. Uh, this is important while you're living, uh, as well as the power of attorney for financial. Uh, this allows the person to make uh, health care decisions, make um, choices for you. Uh, that maybe you can't do for yourself. Now, there's the medical directive. A medical directive is important because that tells the person making the decisions, what do you want? Uh, do I want to be on a respirator? Do I want to be um, fed out of a tube? Uh, this is where you really kind of delineate what kind of care you want, uh, and that will allow them to make the decisions uh, based on your wishage, w uh, wishes. Um, we talked about this as the retirement asset will. You need the disclaimers in. That's very, very important. Uh, we went through that, obviously, in the last section. There's also the HIPAA release. That's the Health Insurance Portability Accountability Act. And simply this is HIPAA is what you call the Privacy Act. I'm sure you've been aware that if you call a doctor's office and want to get information on a spouse, the answer is they can't help you. They can't give it to you. You can't get it. A HIPAA release uh, is very, very critical. Most folks don't have them. And when they do get them, it's right at the site of the emergency. You, you rush to the hospital, um, you fill out some forms. One of them is a HIPAA release, but if you go to the hospital, you're unconscious or you can't sign for whatever reason, then there's, there's a problem. So you want to have all these documents well resolved well in advance. Uh, the um, power of attorney for healthcare and financial, uh, those you can pretty much get you know, a staples or, or even your will, you can kind of get those fairly easily. But the medical directive and the HIPAA release are available on my website at uh, realisticeconomist.us. Uh, you can download those forms and, and, and use them, just have them, you know, you know, completed the right way. What I want to stress is doing an annual tax checkup. Are you getting your tax situation reviewed with all the possibilities that we saw in these videos, uh, and maybe more possibilities. The, honor, the honest answer is you know, most often it's not. You know, and, and people will ask me, they Joe, you know, why hasn't my CPA told me about this stuff? Why hasn't my advisor told me about this stuff? What we found is when people say that, you know, my accountant takes care of my taxes, what we've found is that become the seven most expensive words in America. What we're going to learn, or, or I'm sorry, what you should have learned already, is that uh, uh, CPAs or accountants are really not, uh, they're tax preparers, they're not tax advisors. You know, they're busy doing returns, they have a general practice, so if it's a specific question, I'm not sure. What happens is the onus always falls on you to make sure you're, you're maximizing, uh, and as Judge Hand said, you're, you're arranging your affairs as properly to pay the least amount of taxes. Uh, we talked about it is you, know, you never get the call on April 16th after taxes are due from your CPA and he doesn't tell you, well, you know, you can do this this year or next year and you'll save tax dollars. So it's important to understand that the onus is on you. Hopefully that's the benefit of going through these videos. You'll get some insight. That's the end of video four. Uh, let's do a quick review. What we talked about is the death taxes, uh, the tax tip, you know, don't die in New Jersey, 37% uh, estate tax on smaller estates. You know, New Jersey has an, an inheritance tax as well. You know, judges hand comments, uh, income errors, the SIPs and tree uh, for the couple and SIPs for income, reduction for all your insurance costs. We joked about the Sicilian Actuary, the Pension Protection Act of 2006, using the dollar multiplier to get uh, multiple benefits for each dollar. Uh, the six important must have documents, getting an annual checkup, and ultimately the seven most expensive words in America. That concludes tax reduction strategies for living well. Uh, I want to thank you for going through the program. Uh, just let you know that we have our other educational programs on Social Security, uh, health care, Medicare, Medicaid, and staying healthy, and retire on less income, less risk, and more money. Uh, again, thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad you participated in the program. I'd love to hear your comments, your emails, questions. Uh, I think a lot of it will be garnered 
a lot more information as we go and be more specific on an email question uh, on the Q&A. Thank you very much and have a great day. Welcome back, folks. I want to thank you for finishing your video series. I hope that you send some feedback as far as the programs, how they're going, uh, what needs to get done, improved, or changed. We'll gladly do that as we go forward with our next, uh, uh, as we update our topics. Uh, as far as the next topics are concerned, we have the, remember, the four different topics that we introduced. Uh, so you feel free to take any of those topics. Just give us a call, and we'll make sure you have an access code uh, to access uh, those rest of the videos. Thank you very much for enjoying and hope you enjoyed the series. Thank you. Bye now.